Hi, my name is Kirsten Gaznavi. I'm an artist that will be in this show. Um, I made some articulated paper dolls and fashioned them into earrings. So there's three pairs of articulated paper doll earrings. Um, I did a similar concept in a previous show. Uh, these are a little bit different. So uh, thinking about the theme of the show, um, just made me kind of think about identity and um, kind of like your mirror reflection. So the dolls are symmetrical kind of, but of course a little off because each one is one of a kind. So there's uh, the black and white dolls and then there's color dolls that each have kind of different decorations or tattoos on their body. Um, it's based off a little bit of the larger dolls that I did for the triennial show. So the theme for those larger dolls was come as you are. So kind of balancing the different duality that we have as humans, and especially with women, there may be sides of you that you're more comfortable with showing to the world. And then there may be a side of you that you keep to yourself. And these pieces represent finding the balance in between and being comfortable being yourself and sharing who you are with the world. My name is Rhonda Gavin Hayes from Walker, Wisconsin. I'm excited about participating in the Three Faces of Eve Web Arts Exhibition at Five Points Art Gallery Studios. My three submissions consist of my past, present, and future. The first piece represents my African heritage, which has wooden beads, African fabrics, and shells. The second piece is multicolored, which represents the multicultures within my family. The third is futuristic. It consists of silvers, golds, and all the possibilities that go along with the future. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Bowie. I live in Washington, DC. I uh, have been a working artist for some time now and uh, am very happy happy uh, to be in this exhibit and thank Fatima for all her work. The three pieces that you uh, are being able to see in the exhibit are representative of uh, the three phases of womanhood actually. And those three phases exist in all different cultures that Trinity, in some cultures the Trinity is male and most pre-conversion cultures the Trinity is female and um, represents different phases of womanhood and different roles at each one. And the particular pieces that I contributed to this show represent a woman in the phase of being a priesthood, a priest, death to her people, a seer, a healer, and all the spiritual roles that that encompasses. In most priest conversion cultures, you just don't jump up and say you're a healer or a priestess. It's sort of endowed upon you. And you work many, 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 many years, decades before you are allowed to practice your craft. Um, two of the pieces are amulets that are embellished with sacred stones, with secret objects, with healing objects, with protective objects, with objects that connect the wearer to the creator and are uh, a piece worn in ceremonies to indicate that the person who's wearing them is working at that time. And the pieces are there to facilitate her work. One is worn around the neck and the other is worn at the waist, um, uh, worn across the shoulders at the waist. Uh, the third piece is uh, I referenced or thought about the stoles that Yoruba royalty and priests and priests and priestesses wear in the commencing of ceremonial work. And those uh, those pieces always have symbols and signs on them. Some of them are widely known and some of them are not. The piece that I'm sharing with you is um, two uh, has a front and a back, if you will, the front of the piece. Uh, is adorned and embellished with um, amulets uh, consisting of things like herbs, roots, stones, and uh, sacred objects that uh, 
are again an indicator of the wearer's role and status and accomplishments in service to the community and to individuals within the community. The back of it is adorned with um, cow with symbols, different symbols, all of which mean something. Some of them are dinkra symbols. Some of them are simply sacred symbols that are common across all a lot of different cultures that indicate um, work role. Um, and the person's relationship to the community and to the creator that um, under, through which she is able to serve. Um, the concepts of three faces of Eve is very ancient and very old and very powerful. And it um, mean, it is a way of women um, indicating the feminine principle, divine energy and all of it's to be done in service to individuals and to the community. And we all know that the worst thing that the wearer can do is use it to or for their own ends. No, 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 no. So that is my work. And I'm sorry I can't be there. And again, thank Fatima and thank all of the fellow artists in the show. My name is Kiki Jaiki Zen. Um, I'm an artist currently residing in Long Beach, California uh, for roughly about a year and a half now. Um, I was previously from Chicago. Um, in terms of the three works and the three phases of Eve, um, consists of the three moods or phases of since moving to California, or at least moving to a new space or environment. Um, the three wor works, um, like the mood or the phases, um, consists of burden slash baggage. Uh, care and free. The first work that represents burden or baggage would be the work Drip Drop. Um, this piece consists of mostly glass beads, which is roughly about two pounds. Um, definitely one of the heavier pieces in the show, or at the, I mean, my series. <laughs> um, so that one would represent the beginning uh, phases of moving to California, uh, feeling very overwhelmed. I'm, I'm still very overwhelmed with this new space. Um, and then the next piece would be the piece care slash caress. Um, like the title itself, it represents uh, self-care and definitely a lot of self-care. Um, since moving here and for myself, um, uh, for that piece, it's, it's for the user to kind of give themselves a hug uh, while wearing it. So each of the pockets would have the piece, uh, I'm mean, sorry, would have the words care and caress on each side when they're giving themselves a hug. And then the final piece um, that represents free would be the piece mile lilac. Um, being free means definitely a lot of things for everyone. Um, my free right now would be feeling very content with where I am um, in terms of work, life, and producing art. Um, definitely feel, uh, yeah, very content and very happy where I am. It's a good balance with everything. Um, so yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoy the show and enjoy the other pieces in the work. Um, so yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Ellen Wagner. I am a current resident of Los Angeles, but I am originally from St. Louis, Missouri. I am so excited to be a part of Five Points Art Gallery's ex exhibition for the Three Faces of Eve. Uh, my collection reflects um, my many moods. I feel like fashion is an extension of our mood and personality. And I wanted to showcase that today in the pieces that I'll be showing. Um, I have multiple sides to myself. Um, so I wanted to really show that in the pieces that I'm doing today. Um, so there's my girly side, very ultra feminine. Um, and you'll see that in the, the dress um, that I am showing today. And then there's also this very like strong uh, warrior um, feel that I like to have um, to myself. And then, and at that point, that's where it's more of an armor piece. And you'll see that as well um, in the harness 
that I'll be showcasing today. And then there's also just my super casual, cool, laid back, um, more athletic side. And I did an um, interpretation of that as well. And another uh, piece that you will see as well today. So I'm just basically, you know, I really enjoy showing um, personality in the, the clothing that I wear and the accessories that I wear. And it has um, basically, this is how I present myself in my work. Um, everything I do is um, sustainable as much as possible. I do all of my pieces from recycled uh, jersey cotton. Um, I do a lot of the, a lot of deconstruction of t-shirts. Um, I also incorporate um, a lot of um, African um, textures, um, fabrics, and a lot of my work is also influenced um, by African art and design as well. Um, so I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy the show and um, I'm excited to present. Hi, my name is Sheila Miller of Chapats Designs from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I would like to give you a little background on my pieces that are in this fashion show. Uh, you'll see a black rubber spiral, a uh, large earring with uh, silver beads. And as I was uh, doing this particular item, I thought this would represent um, Eve's second personality where she was very bold and glamorous in, in her uh, dressing. Next piece would be a black rubber necklace that represents the different stages of Eve's personalities. Uh, the middle stone represents her first personality. Her set, the second uh, large stone was uh, her second personality, very big and bold once again. And the bottom stone was her third personality uh, where she evened out as far as um, her life and the things that she did. I also uh, have a uh, felt it purse, which I called the festival purse. And it's accented with uh, vivid colors from scraps of garments that I had made in the past. The design represents how her brain uh, was operating um, scattered here and scattered there with the different personalities. I've also accented uh, this purse with uh, three faces made out of uh, clay. And those represented her three phases of life, which all together, it became a beautiful um, piece of art. Hey, Joy Eugene here. I'm from Chicago. My three faces of E represents my three personalities. I have a gold crop top with embroidered hair and beads that reflects my feminine and sexy side. I have a jean button up that gives off my unisex but tomboyish side that carefree, you know, with patterns that represents his own language. And I have a pair of denim jeans that reflects my work in industrial side, you know, all to give off and represent this Afrocentric and African but American essence. <laughs> My name is Eden Jesma. It's like my, this would be my first show just in general. I'm from Jersey City. I've always lived here my entire life. And I'm pretty sure that's kind of like a part of what happened as in me getting picked. My first piece that I would like to talk about would be the Dance with the Devil. It's a black and white hoodie. Well, it's a sweater. And I chose to use that picture just in general because it like really spoke to me. It's like kind of like a dark side as opposed to like something that's like light and happy. And the piece that I chose after, it's a piece by Vincent Van Gogh. And I chose to use the wheat field. I like the colors that it goes with and it kind of offsets the fact of how dark the Dance with the Devil piece is. So that's why I wanted to put them together. And then I have like the medium piece, which is The Last Supper which I decided to make into a pair of pants because I felt like it went perfectly with the three of them together, especially since one piece has a devil and the last piece has like literally a, piece of, a picture of Jesus on it. So I thought it would like go perfectly together as one, two, and three. 
And the reason why I put them all three together just in general is because I did personally, like I loved how they look together. And I think that each piece like just as a whole stands out. So I thought all three of them put together would be perfect. Hi, my name is Ruthie Joy and I'm talking to you from my studio in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. I have three vests in this show of the three faces of Eve. One color is red, which represents rage. The other color is blue, which represents depression. And the third color is green, which represents envy. We're faced with mental health issues in America, and I hope that people have the chance to address these issues with their loved ones. So I hope you enjoy the vest that I created for this show. Hi, I'm Bridget Ortiz, and I am currently in Brooklyn, New York. And I am excited to be a part of the Three Faces of Eve presented by Five Points Art Gallery. And um, my three pieces are um, definitely literal faces. And that was um, not intentional for this project, but I happen to have, you know, amazing pieces that were a complete alignment with this project. And the reason why I picked these particular three pieces is because in, even though they all end with faces on them, they were all created differently. And so that's what I love about my three pieces. So one of the pieces are um, me reusing artwork from um, esoteric urbanism and cutting the faces out and putting them on a leather dress and then using the rest of the t-shirt that didn't have the faces to shred and cut up to make um, sleeves. So that was probably the first piece that I decided to put in this. And then the second piece was a denim vest that was donated that had um, a face drawn on the back, but just, you know, in marker. And so I thought it would be interesting to see what it would look like if I filled in the face with fabric scraps. So any type of scraps that I had, I cut and kind of piecel, um, puzzled piece them together to create this unique face and also used um, some remnants from a vintage dress to create like these knots um, or fake hair. So those were, so the first piece was recreating, the second piece was recycling, and then the last piece was just a blank dress canvas. And so this actually I created for um, this project. And so I had this African, um, authentic African necklace, beaded necklace that I had for a very, very long time and had missing strings and missing beads. So I really didn't know what to do with it. So um, I had this blank, uh, black dress. I put the, the um, necklace on top of the dress. And the minute I did that, I immediately saw, I was like, wow, I could use the beads, you know, as lines to create a face. Um, and so that's exactly what I did. So this was, I created the face on my own, no guidance whatsoever. And I just used the beads to create a face on the dress. And then once I was done, I hand sewn it, then I cut off the strings. And so you were still left with the crown of the necklace that could be a headpiece now, a neck piece. I mean, it could be really for whatever you want. And so that's of course my favorite piece because it, it happened organically, the face. And so I am um, pretty excited to see how it translates and how it is perceived by others, my three faces for this project. And um, my store, even though I'm currently in Brooklyn, New York, is House of BAV, and it's in East Orange, New Jersey. And Sustainable Fashion Week is a platform for the entire United States. So thank you for having me and enjoy. Hello, my name is Chloe Allen, and I'm a poet from Appleton, Wisconsin. My work explores the crossroads struggle that I'm in as a young but aging woman and it explores it through the lens of identities that I could be or sometimes am. First there's a sultry dark divine feminine look with a black velvet skirt and a beaded hot spider tank top. 
uh, she's weaponized sexuality. She's power, she's free, but she's hurtful because she's always doing what she wants. Then there's the ethical self. Um, she's apprehensive, doubting herself, censoring herself in a gray skirt, asking if she has all it takes to be the woman that she believes that she could be or that she was told she could be or who she doesn't want to be. Um, and then there's the mother. She is the goddess, all in red with gold thread and a very powerful uh, covered up outfit uh, because she isn't weaponizing anything. She's using all of her gifts. She's powerful. Uh, and I think I want to be her, but I want to be everyone. And so that's what all of the works explore. My name is Valeria Tatera. And I'm a member of the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. I'm a visual artist, lecturer, activist, currently residing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In 2022, the election exit polls from CNN referred to Indigenous people as something else regulating us to a footnote in history. We are ghosts on our own land. My wearable pieces address the impact of colonization on Indigenous erasure, visibility, and our resilience. I chose to use three Tyvek disposable suits and each suit is hand stamped with indigenized slogans. Land back, missing and murdered indigenous women, girls and two spirits, and we are still here. The materials I use represent our past, our disposability and seven generations forward. Each Tyvek suit is embellished with elements of our regalia. Land back is embellished with black ribbon, Missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two spirits with clay squash blossoms. And we are still here with orange ribbons. My inspiration is punk rock meets indigenous futurism. She Miigwech, Five Point Art Gallery. Hi, my name is Fatima Laster, and I am a multidisciplinary visual artist chiming in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, my three contributions to the the three phases of Eve wearable arts exhibition and fashion show um, touch on a subject matter that is near and dear to my heart, unfortunately. And it's about gentrification and the gentrification going on um, in my neighborhood in Milwaukee. Um, and I'm approaching it from a few different angles um, based on the blight that is sold to outside investors to come um, profit off of this the area and save the people, but also more um, visible signals of gentrification, um, like the changing of economics and demographics of your neighbors. And so I'm mixing all of these concepts in, um, in the three pieces. I've collected a ponderance of litter from my uh, neighbor, which is a liquor store, which is actually used to market um, the facade of light in urban environments of black and brown and financially and economically um, disadvantaged neighborhoods. And so um, each item is laden with um, either liquor bottles, um, blunt wraps, cigarettes, cigarette packets, water bottles, and um, just an abundance of snacks and um, candies and chips and bags and what have you and soda bottles. Um, just to comment on the litter situation that you will see here in the neighborhood, but also, um, again, what is marketed out to um, what is considered a, a situation of despair that investors are allowed to come into neighborhoods and, and, and essentially use their money to do land grabs and displace people. Um, the demographic shift um, focuses on Three um, types of people. Um, the first is probably what you would consider like a stay-at-home mom or wife, which is associated with a more uh, affluent um, housing or a habitation situation, whereas um, the majority of the people in the neighborhood um, can't afford that quote-unquote luxury. Um, there's also a lot of satire between all the pieces. So that piece is laden with liquor bottles, drug needles and spoons, and different things that I picked up from the liquor store, trash that I has blown onto my property. Um, 
and then uh, commenting on again the stories that promote that are promoting uh, pervasive in the urban environment, whereas in suburban and affluent homes is still an issue. The second piece is consists of a jogger, um, a sports bra, and leggings that have been embellished with um, cigarette butts um, in a way that kind of mimics the Adidas um, stripes. Um, and it's commenting on that person jogging in the middle of the day um, at leisure um, while everyone else is working. That, that piece is filled with um, water bottles, but also cigarette packs, blunt wraps and wrappers and what have you, just to show the uh, conflict and contrast between this healthy um, lifestyle, but um, the pervasive health disparity in the area around them as well, in addition to the economic um, disparity. And then the final piece, which is probably the most fun piece of my three in the collection, um, is uh, that fashionista or that hipster who thinks it's cool and trendy to um, live in an urban environment and think they are um, slumming it per se, and um, they are walking around in their um, very expensive, even thrifted items where um, they stick out like a sore thumb or they're creating their own um, cultural niche. And so uh, those are my three pieces. I want to give an extra special thank you to my three models for being the face for my pieces, even though they're not the ones um, complicit <laughs> with the subject matter, but I want to thank them in advance. And um, I hope that the audience can appreciate the seriousness of the subject matter, but still enjoy and engage with the pieces um, that are submitted for this fashion show. Hi, my name is Pamela Graham. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And my concept for the Three Faces of Eve um, is entitled Moonstruck. Um, just kind of focusing on the various moods and behaviors um, that women go through similar to the phases of the moon. Um, my first piece is entitled Camaria. Um, it is a metallic silver leather piece. And Camaria is the name of my middle child, which means like the moon. Um, it represents the strong intuition of a woman, the shift in personality that comes from the regulation of the moon and a woman's menstrual cycle and how people are judgmental towards um, women during that time of the month. Um, so a woman being able to feel and acknowledge is very liberating during that five to seven days. So we kind of live on the moon for a nice majority of our life. My second piece um, is named after my great aunt Zula. And that is the brown um, leather piece. You have various textures and colors of leather that I brought together um, to create the piece. And it represents um, the brilliant woman who is the head of her time, um, carrying her ancestors' personality, her unborn children, her lifelong experiences um, that we often internalize. And um, it sometimes can change who we are as a person throughout our lives. Um, our intuitions often can be perceived as crazy or delusional when um, they are expressed. And then my last piece is named after my um, great grandmother, which is her name was Sweetie Bowens. And it is the mint green um, 70s vintage fabric piece with a leather mask. And it represents the grand shift um, of a woman as she comes into age in her elder years and her spirit comes and um, people in the family are trying to figure out who is this new woman who as a child was like the disciplinary and the strong woman. Um, she's a protector of herself. Um, also kind of representing the um, paranoia of her being due to childhood trauma um, and different experiences. And now she's come into being the protector and um, the calm spirit in the family. I'm Melissa Dorn. I live and work in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And for this uh, runway exhibition, I made three works um, that relate to three different times of my life. 
And um, what I think of as the first work uh, is called Trying, and it is um, a pillbox hat, a muff, and a cape. And it relates, it really, I think about that time of my life as I'm trying to meet other people's expectations. The second look is uh, definitely a time in my life when I was having a lot of fun. And what you'll notice about this look is the bright pink fur. Um, so again, there is a muff and a cape and a bit of silver added in there. And the third uh, work or works, uh, again, also include a muff and it's really about um, control. In my attempt to have control over life, and we all know how that goes. Um, the muff includes a uh, latch hook mop and snow fence, as well as the um, skirt that you'll see is made out of snow fence as well. Uh, and it took me a little bit to arrive at these uh, looks, but I was really. Um, once I got to the different periods of my life, it was fun to think about those periods and then how they might relate in a runway show. I'm Martina Patterson, AKA Mars. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share some art and pieces of self for this exhibition, The Three Faces of Eve. And uh, my inspiration is alchemic electromagnetic melanin. Um, to delve further into it, uh, was inspired by the divine family or three, um, the chemical makeup on a mathematical term. Um, melanin has 318 grams. And when you add that together in numerology comes out to three. So I was really inspired by how things just kind of flow that way. Um, the piece that has what I'm calling gree gree pouches, they're made out of plastic shower curtain that I sewed into pouches and have um, colorful marbles in the inside, glass marbles in the inside that represents masculine energy and was inspired by Osiris. <clears throat> and the second piece is uh, inspired by Horus, Osiris's child, which is a combination of divine energy of masculine, feminine, and otherworldly, since Horus is often depicted as a falcon. And uh, the third piece is inspired by Isis, the divine feminine and mother bringer of all. And that piece I like to call a tyrosine time travelers made out of copper and uh, a wooden frame. And I hope that you enjoy my pieces for the show.